Do we have, is everybody here? Everybody's here? Huh? If you're not here, raise your hand. Okay, one from Egypt, two from Egypt. Saidi. <laughs> you? They're still coming in the door, mashallah. The tickets are free, right? Do you have any Muslims with us today? Anybody's Muslim? Raise your hand. Huh? Oh. Anybody that's not Muslim yet? Raise your hand. Huh? One, two, three. How can I be surrounded by all these terrorists? I'm not a Muslim. Uh, that, that slipped. I've been reading the newspaper too much. Alhamdulillah. I like the bird up here. I, I looked at that said, what, what are you trying to tell me? With a bird, a Yusuf is for the birds, or what? By the way, my name is Yusuf. Can you say Yusuf? Yusuf. Huh. You got it right the first time. All these years, my wife still says useless. <laughs> if they laugh at that, they'll laugh at anything. Some good luck. We have a very special and beautiful subject tonight. And I feel very happy, very honored that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, would let me be the one to talk about this favorite topic of mine. And this topic is Isa ibn Maryam. Now for the Muslims, we knew exactly what that meant. But somebody who doesn't know the Arabic language, they might say, what did he say? What is that? We translate that to say, Jesus, the son of Mary. Peace be upon you. I wanted to mention before we got started, a couple of things in the etymology of words. We're saying, what we, do we mean by these words? And the first word that we want to talk about tonight is Isa. And, and how come you say Isa? What, what, who is Isa? Why don't you just say Jesus like normal people? Actually, if you read from the Old Testament, the book or the Torah of the Yahudi, the Jewish, you will find that the person that's mentioned there, his name, they have one, they say, Isua, Isua. And this person is not the Jesus that we know today, but we find that this word was used long, long, long ago. One of the descendants from Abraham. And by the way, while we're on the subject of names, we don't say Abraham. His name was Ibrahim. And you should learn that because Jewish, they don't eat ham. So they like... <laughs> I told you, they'll laugh at anything. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We have a very good crowd with us tonight, mashallah. And this subject of Jesus, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, is a very special one to me because for many years, almost 50 years, I was a Christian. And Christians, they love Jesus. After all, that's what Christian means. This is somebody who follows Christ. But guess what? That's another word that we have to understand where does it mean, where did it come from? Christ comes from Christos. Christos is not Arabic. It's not Hebrew. It's not Aramaic. It's Greek. This is a Greek word, Christos. And it got shortened to Christ, and then it became pronounced Christ. So basically what we're learning is when we take things to English, we mispronounce them pretty bad. So it's nice to know how to go back to the original language and get a feel of what it was like 2,000, 
years ago for Jesus and even all the way back five, six, ten thousand years ago for Musa. Who's Musa? Huh? Can you guess? Musa must be Moses. Yeah. See? And Ibrahim. And how about this one? Nuh. Who's Nuh? Noah. Noah. Yeah. How about Yaqub? Jacob. That's good. How about Ayub? You can't guess. I, I could never have guessed that. If somebody didn't tell me, I wouldn't know. Ayub. Who's Ayub? Is that Jacob also? No, no. Job. Job? If it's Job, it needs to have an E on the end or two O's. It must be Job. And we all need a job, you know. Especially these days. <laughs> Job was Ayub. Actually, he was a very, very special messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a prophet of God, because he had a character about him that if you know any Buddhists and you'd like to help them know about Islam, they say so many good things about Buddha. One of the things they told me is that Buddha gave his own arm so that a lion could eat it. Said the lion has to have something to eat too, so just give him my arm, you know. We don't know if it's a true story because obviously they don't authenticate what they do like we do with Hadith. But what we do know is for sure that Prophet Muhammad told us about this person, Job. And what he said about Ayub, that he was so really humble in front of Allah. In many, many ways. We didn't really even meet somebody like this. He was very, very humble. And when he was afflicted with his disease and everything, so suffering so much, he had what we call maggot in his, on his arm, you know, some disease, and this life form called maggot living there. It fell off onto the ground, and he picked it up, and he put it back, and they said, what is this? He said, all of the creatures, and even this thing, have their risk, their daily bread is what's written for them and he put him back so he could live i think that the more we know about all of the prophets it helps us to understand something in islam outside when you were coming through this door you noticed just over here to my left as you go out there are stories of some of the prophets just a little taste to let you understand you might start out saying okay I know who's Noah, and I know who's Abraham, and wait a minute, why do you call him the second father of humanity? Uh, and why Abraham, you say he's the friend of Allah? Why Moses, you said he's the uh, of Allah? What, what is, okay, take some time and understand that these are great people to us. I noticed that somebody put on there, they are ordinary people. I, I know they were trying to say that they weren't gods, and that's fine, but they're not ordinary people. Because ordinary people like us, <laughs> we make a lot of bad mistakes. Our prophets, our prophets didn't make these major mistakes. They didn't do what some people say they did. Because all the prophets, to us, as Muslims, they're very high. They're very, very, very high. We put them above our own head because we, not just because we love them, we honor them, we revere them, and we follow them. And how could we follow somebody who's doing bad things? So a prophet, somebody who's coming to give us a message from Almighty God, he has to have outstanding character. His character has to be above reproach, so that the people following him would not make the same kinds of mistakes. Now, you might say, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says that. As soon as you do, I'm going to ask you, which Bible? There are many. And one of them may say something, and another one maybe doesn't say that. Because not all of them are the same. For us, we don't have two different opinions. Any question you have about Islam, especially when you're here at this center, you need to know these two things. In Islam, we have to tell the truth, or else we can go to hell forever. Muslims will never knowingly lie about anything to do with Islam. Never. 
And the second thing is the proof. Even if we made a mistake, and it could happen, you can verify it because everything in Islam is clear. It's right in front of you. What do you want to know about Islam? It's there. We have only one Quran, not two versions, not three, not four, not five. It's Quran and it's only Quran in the Lagat Arabiya, in the Arabic language. The same holds true for the Hadith. We know the Prophet Sallallahu he said, and this is Sahih Bukhari, chapter one, called Kitab al-Iman, in the Sahih of his collection, and it says on the authority of Omar, radiallahu anhu, that every single action will be according to the intention. Now, there's not two versions of this. And if you ask any Muslim, what's the first hadith? He can tell you this. And if you ask him, even you start the hadith, he can finish it for you. The same is true of the Quran. Somebody starts to recite something, and he stops. Maybe the Imam forgets something, or he's hesitating. There will be somebody in the crowd, in the jama'ah, who will help him. If he was to say, for instance, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Razim, Bismillahir Rahman Ar-Rahim, Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam, Walam, Walam. Now see, all I said was Lam, wasn't it? Walam, Walam. But they know the rest of it. Because this is how it works in Islam. So for those who don't know, and you never had a chance to be around Muslims to find out, there is not two versions. It's one. And you can check it out. To us, these prophets, all of them, are far above us. But they're not God. They are human beings just like us. They're born. They eat food. They drink, not alcohol, and they go to the bathroom, and they get old, and they die. For us, as Muslims, with our description of Almighty Allah, they couldn't be Allah. None of them could be Allah. Abraham could not be Allah. And anybody who is Jewish he would say, yeah, that's right. And Moses couldn't be Allah. And he would say, yeah, that makes sense. How could Moses be Allah? And if you said, well, what about Jesus? No, no, he could be God. What? Why would you say that? Because he's the Christ. Ah, now we came back to the word that I was talking about. He's the Christ. Don't you believe he's the Christ? Yes, we do. Well, there you are. There's your proof. Why? Do you think Christ means God? If it did, then Christians would all be gods. Yeah? Well, you got the same name, must be gods too. Yeah? No. Likewise, and just think for a minute, when you say this word, you don't know what it is, maybe somebody will tell you it's Messiah. Oh, you believe he's the Messiah. The Messiah is predicted in the Old Testament. Did you know that the word Christos is the translation of the word Messiah. It's the same word, just another language. If I said bait, huh? it's from Arabic, bait. I'm not talking about the English word, you know, to catch fish. I'm talking about bait, a house. In English, it's house. You didn't change any. We were talking about the words. So somebody, one of the preachers that I used to know, they used to say a lot of stuff. One of them, he said, Jesus is the Logos. And the people were like, really? Yes, it says in the Bible, he's the Logos. Wow, that sounds pretty powerful, doesn't it? Logos. Anybody know what's Logos? Huh? You didn't know? Okay. You know the image on the outside of the building? That blue thing? That's called the logo. You got one up here? Yeah, that's a logo. This is the blue image of this building that we're in, isn't it? Or is that a person making salat? Maybe. I don't know. I'm just looking at it. This is called a logo. Why? Do you know it's called a logo? From the same word, from Greek. It means word. That's all it means. 
So this represents a word. When something, an image or picture, represents a word, you call it a logo. Like Coca-Cola has a logo. And by the way, if you turn Coca-Cola upside down and backwards and move some letters around, it kind of looks like La Mecca, La Muhammad. But you have to twist it a lot. But the good news, you can flip it back over after that, twist it around this way, it said, Muslim waste their time on the computer. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You get that one, right? Muslims, I love you, but you waste your time, mashallah. <laughs> so anyway, the word, the word logo literally means word, that's all. But it was a new way to capture his audience, logos. And he became famous, suddenly everybody was saying, logos, logos, logos. And people were amazed, oh, he's the logos. It means word. Exactly what it means, word. And if you said, Jesus is the word, we would say, it's in the Quran. Kalamat Allah. The word of Allah. But how that works, and it's out there on the wall, you can read it for yourself. How that works is what Allah said in the Quran, chapter 19, called Surah Miriam. And by the way, before I go any further, how important is Mary to us? Ooh, very important. Allah says she's the best woman he created. And when we say Ibn Maryam, the son of Mary, this is a very special title. And she's a very special lady. In fact, Allah, look how Allah gave her so much distinction. He has a chapter, chapter 4, called the women. That's for all the women. Doesn't have to even be Muslim. He talks about women. But the only one mentioned by clear name and everything in the Quran and she has not only her name mentioned throughout the Quran, she has her own chapter, chapter Miriam. That's chapter 19. So this is how much Allah is bragging about her and saying how good she is. Now when the angel came to Miriam, she was a young girl and she was in the temple. And the angel came to her and told her that she was going to have a baby. And how is this? Since no man has touched me, and by the way, she's telling the angel, and you keep your distance too. <laughs> yeah, stay there. He said, take it easy, you know. Because, I'm giving you a Texas translation. Okay? <laughs> so, he says, your Lord says, he's telling her what Allah says. Your Lord says, it is easy. It's easy for Allah, whenever he wants anything done, he just says, Kun fayakun. How is it? Kun fayakun. Be and it is. And this is what we find really the monotheistic religions before Islam saying the same thing. Any commandment of Allah, he says be and it is. Just like that. No hesitation. Not a nanosecond. Then. And so this was the creation of Jesus in the first place. So he is the word of Allah, spoken. And the word becomes alive, becomes flesh. And what is that? That's the miracle. Now we find, I'm comparing of course to the Bible, my background's in the Bible, can't help it. We find in the book of John, a story like this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and God spoke the word, and the word became flesh, and like that. Well, we know that. This is not known for us. And somebody in the translation said, the word was God. But in the Koine Greek it didn't say that. It just said the word God. Meaning, just like in Arabic, well, there's a lot of things that, we don't have all these little connectors in Arabic, but you know what it means. Clearly. And so, Kalamatullah. Kalamatullah. There's only two words there. Word and Allah. But it doesn't mean Allah is the word or the word is Allah or any of that. Because how would you speak and make yourself exist? That's kind of strange. But anyway, we'll come back to our subject. And our subject is about Jesus in particular, the last days. His return to the earth. In order to do this, I naturally have to skip over a lot of the stuff I love to talk about. But just let me take a second or two 
couple minutes maybe to talk about Jesus Islam and his mission. He's born, as we now know, a miracle birth in a way no other person was ever born. He was born with no father. Is that a miracle? Yes. Is that the biggest miracle that ever happened? No, of course not. The universe is a bigger miracle. I'm sorry, you know, one person is important, but the universe, that's pretty big. But, okay, just human being. Is that the biggest miracle that ever happened in a human being? Huh? No, not exactly. Was there ever a woman? A woman, now wait a minute, who is born with no mother? A mother? No mother? He had a mother. Children come out of their mother. But how could a woman be born and no mother? So where did Eve come from? Oh, is that a bigger miracle, yes or no? Yes or no? Bigger or no? So, wait a minute. What about Adam? Did he have a mother? No. A father? No. In fact, wasn't he created from dirt? Yes or no? If you can believe that, and all the Bible we're talking about, or Quran that we're talking about, they say the same thing. If you believe that, why would you put a bigger thing on Eve, Hawa, than Adam? You don't get excited about Adam. Okay, that's normal. We see people being coming up out of the dirt every day. But a lady coming from a bone, this is amazing. Aji. But hold on. Now later, one of the descendants, thousands of years later, a girl has a baby. But no husband. No father. Just a miracle birth. So we have miracle birth one way, but we also had a miracle birth another way. A woman born with no mother. And wait. The biggest miracle of, obviously, has to be Adam coming from dirt, no mother, no father. And by the way, we would never worship Adam or Eve, would we? No, of course not. So, already you start to see a different perspective that the Muslims have about Jesus. At the same time, we will tell you that he did many miracles. Not only he was a miracle in his birth, Something out of the ordinary, something out of, doesn't fit the science, but it happened. He also did miracles. Curing the leper, one who has a skin disease, cured him. Somebody is sick, they get well. Somebody is blind, born blind, and now they can see. That's a big miracle. But how about this? Somebody is dead. No heartbeat, no pulse dead, turning to, you know, not smelling so good anymore. And then, bring them back to life. This is what we believe Jesus did this? By the permission of Allah. How? By the permission of Allah. This is what we find in the Bible. It doesn't say any difference. He said, everything I do, by what? By Allah. So, for sure, this is amazing, a miracle. But these are signs so that we know he is the prophet. We know he is the one who is the messenger giving us the message. I don't trust the messenger who comes to me, knock the door. Who is it? Messenger? Okay, what? Give me all your money. Uh, the king said, hand over all your money to me. Huh? Yeah, right. Do you have any ID? Uh, no, I left it in my other bicycle. Uh huh. But really, really, I'm not joking. I mean, you know, like, just give me 50% of what you got. It's okay. What? Do you believe this guy? Of course not. What are you going to give him? A hard time. That's what you give him. Maybe I'm going to call the police, 911. I want to get rid of this guy because I don't believe him. But if somebody came, then he said, no, really, really, I'm, I work for the king. He told me to come and talk to you. And I ask for ID. He brings me some proof. Has ID with him. Okay. This has his name. Has his picture. Looks like him. Okay. Could be. 
But do you have any other sign? Do you have ID? Do you have a business card? Something to show me. And he said, oh yeah, I have this emblem from the king. Now this is the king's emblem, the official emblem, royal seal. <sighs> yeah, that's probably from the king. I better get my act together, do what he said to do. This makes sense. So in the same way, Allah made sure that the people didn't have any option. He sent his prophets with miracles and signs. Every prophet who came, came with miracles and signs. So the people had no doubt that they knew. I'll give you only one other example because we really do have to move forward as our subject. But there was one of the prophets of Almighty Allah who came to his people and he was telling them the message. The message is, and they said, we don't listen to you. But the message went, no, we don't listen to you. You're no messenger. You're just one of us, a common person. Even though they saw his good character, they saw his nice way, he's humble, he's kind, he's so... But at the same time, they don't want to believe him. Because the message is a big message. They said, why don't you see this big rock? Why don't you make a camel come out of this rock and she's pregnant with a baby camel? Why don't you do that? Then we'll believe. So Allah made the rock open up like an egg, you know what I'm saying? Poof! Then there's a camel, and she's pregnant exactly like they said. What was the name of the prophet? Salah. Did that happen? Yes. And then Allah gave him a test. Now this is another thing. When Allah gives you a big sign, He then gives you a big test. Imagine this. So. Allah made it so the camel drinks all the water out of their well. And then the next day they can have the water. But then the next day the camel drinks all the water. And the next day they drink it. But now the problem, some of them said, why do we have to wait for water? Man, this is a big pain. This camel is drinking all this water, you know. And we need water, we're in the desert, you know. So, one of them, he said, I'll kill it. And he killed the camel. And for this, Allah destroyed them. But it's not just because he killed the camel, is it? It's because of their disbelief, even after the proof comes to them. When Musa Salam came, he gave many signs to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh would say, uh, yeah, okay. But then he would change his mind. Every time, even when the Red Sea opened up, and here went the children of Israel, Behind Musa, Moses, Ali Salam. And when they got to the other side, here's Pharaoh chasing them. And the children of Israel were saying, Oh, we knew we shouldn't have done this. Man, they're going to get us. Oh, we're in big trouble. They were worried. But then Allah closed the water in on Pharaoh and his people. And look what Allah says. Huh? Look what he says. Because you refuse to believe. Because the guy, look what he's saying first. He's saying, okay, I believe in the God, the Lord of the children of Israel and Moses. I believe in him now and I'm a Muslim. He said it. When the water was coming in on him. And Allah said, now? Now? No way. Allah is going to accept it now. And then he said, and we'll preserve you in your body as a sign and guess what that's one of the reasons why some of the scientists today have become Muslims because they saw this sign when they found hey here's one of the ancient pharaohs preserved with no embalming fluid preserved without the regular embalming technique how did they, they say well he drowned it's evident that he drowned that and they said well maybe this is Moses the, not Moses himself, but the Pharaoh of Moses could be the, you know, this guy. They brought in Dr. Maurice Bukai, he examined it, and he found, to his surprise, oh my God, this could easily be the one mentioned in the Bible, that could be a true story. And when the Muslims there in Egypt said, so? He said, no, this could be, they said, so it's in the Quran. It says Allah will preserve him in the body as a sign. There it is, so we believe it. Dr. Maurice Bukai wrote two books, very famous. What's the origin of man? And the other one he wrote, the Bible, Quran, and Science. And by the way, he said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah. 
Assalamu alaikum Rasulullah. That brings us now to the message. What was the message of these prophets? What did they bring that was such a hard thing for the people to accept? What was it was being said that was so tough on them that they would reject even with these miracles in front of them? What was it that Jesus salam, was telling his people? La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. What does that mean? Well, if you've been around the Arabs, around their family, and they get children, you know this word la all the time. La, 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 la. <laughs> and now you know what it means. I don't have to tell you, do I? No, 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 no. I saw la. Ilaha. Ila is the word in English, God. Allah has no equivalent in English. There is no equivalent for the word Allah in English. So we substituted the word God with a big G. The same way the translators did when they translated the Hebrew and put a God with a big G or a God with a little G. And please, I'm sorry, but can't you be more creative than that? Because when people are talking, they don't have any way to show you the big G, little G. You know, be like, I was talking about that guy's little God, this little and then the big God, and, and, and what's that? That doesn't make any sense. And when you start a sentence, you have to start with a big G anyway, so how do you make a distinction? The word Allah comes from the root, but it's unique because you can say Al-Ilah, that means the God. So Allah does not mean the God. Al-Ilah means the God. Aleha, that's the gods. Aleha, the gods. But the word Allah, coming from the root, means about worship. There is one part of the understanding in Islam called Tawheed al which is the monotheistic understanding of worship. And that's from this word, Allah. Allah cannot be made plural. The word cannot have two or three or four. And the word Allah cannot have gender, male or female. Can't do that. Now, right away, somebody could say, oh, man, please, I got a translation of Quran right here. And it says, he is Allah, Allah, he is this, him, his, it's all over the place. Masculine. And this is only out of respect. It's only out of respect because Allah does not have gender. Not he, not she. Not like anything in the creation. Lisa commit lihi shayin wa huwa samiyun basir means there isn't anything like Allah. Nothing. There isn't anything like Allah. But He is all hearing and all seeing. And that's not like us, is it? Is it? Can you see everything? Of course not. I can't even see everything in the room. I mean, if I turn around, oh, now, oh, but now I can't see you. Oh, well, you know. And as far as hearing, well, dogs can hear more than we hear, don't they? Yeah, come on. So for sure, we realize that Allah is not like creation. But now the other one might say, Hey, I found in the Quran it said, We, our, us. What about that? What kind of proof is that Allah and his cabinet members? Is that Allah and his parliament? Is that Allah and his jama'ah? Is that Allah and the angels? What is this about? Well, the, the fortunate thing for us is English has the same thing. And that's the respect you give to someone because of their high status. Like a king or queen, when they make any decree, they never say I, they say we. We declare the following decree on this date, on this place, like this. So they use we, our and us. And to help you with the English, I'll digress for a moment to show you something. When we speak to people and talk to them directly, we don't treat them the same as we talk about something else. If I said, these chairs over here, these chairs, those bottles over there, they are nice, those chairs are lovely. I use the word are because it's plural. But if I have something by itself, this camera is a nice camera, rather small aimed at my stomach, it's okay, but it is, and those are, always it's that way in English, yes or no? No, it's not. 
Because when I speak to you or about myself, I change it. I speak to you, and you're one person, you're single, any of you brothers single will make dough for you. That's a joke, you're supposed to laugh. <laughs> ah, that's better, much nicer. Okay, here we go. But seriously, a person by themselves, you just now caught it, okay. A person by themselves over here, and you're saying to them, you is my friend? Well, from Egypt maybe you said that. But, <laughs> <laughs> or you say you are my friend. Are. And when I speak about myself, do I say I is? In some parts of New York, yes we do. But, other, <laughs> but we say I am. And this is that royal status that we're using. Okay? So I, I said this because this is the message. This is the message. You have to know who is the law. This is his name. And it's an amazing name. It's talking about the center of worship. He's the center of worship, not plural, and not having any partners whatsoever. Perfect name for the perfect God. Yes or no? Yes, of course. And by the way, it's the name used by the Jews and Christians. Huh? What did he say? No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. Well, I'll prove it to you. When you go into a hotel... Check in the hotel, put your bags down, go over to the bed, there's a little table with a lamp, and you pull out the drawer. What's in there? Not the yellow pages, somebody already beat you to that. But the Bible's still sitting there, isn't it? Open it up, it's placed by the Gideons, and let's go like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Aha! Look! Right there! <laughs> Translation into 27 different languages. Urdu, Tamil, Spanish, Mandarin, Chinese. But in alphabetical order, the first one is Afrikaans language, which is similar to German. Number two, Arabia. Oh, let's see what it says. It says it right there. Because they took the verse from John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Look what it says in Arabic. For Allah so loved the world. Whoa! Why it says Allah? Huh? Huh? Because that's the Arabic word for Christian's God. It's the Arabic word for the Jewish the same way. And if you know what I said, talk to the people at the Gideon department about their translator. And if you have a chance, has any, any of you ever seen the Bible in Arabic? Kitab al-Muqtas. Anybody? Have you seen it? Page 1, Genesis. 17 times Allah, 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 Allah. So this is his name. And now the messenger of Allah we're talking about tonight, Isa, his name wasn't Jesus. That's an English word that didn't exist even a thousand years ago. The word God did not exist a thousand years ago. The word Jesus did not exist a thousand years ago. The word Muhammad did. The word Allah did. Those existed. But anyway, to come back to our main subject, what about Jesus? What was his message? He was telling the people, you have to worship God alone, without partners. And I am his messenger to you. And they didn't have a big problem with that because they wanted the Messiah. Because the Messiah to come to them at that time was going to lead them to victory, defeat their enemy, and they were imagining they were going to overthrow the Romans and take over the world, which they said is rightfully theirs because they are the chosen ones. They were very ready for that. And by the way, that's true. The name itself, Yahud, means guided. Allah chose them and gave them guidance. He did. Not all of them accepted it, but he gave them this great favor. Everything was rocking along pretty good. Nice. It was nice. They were happy with him. So much so, you read in the Bible, it says anyway, 
that they were putting down those palm leaves on Sunday, on the first day of the week, putting down these palms, and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. They're happy, come riding in on the donkey, coming in. And then, what happened? How come three or four days later they want to kill him? What happened? Read it in the Quran, chapter 61, verse 6. Verse 5, first of all, talks about Moses. Musa salam to my kaum, my people, my kaum mahi, his people, and he said to them, I am the messenger of Allah to you, huh? telling them what? La ilaha illallah. And the next verse, Jesus, Isa, alayhi salam, he said, and I'm the messenger of you, to, from Allah, telling you the same thing, and, and he said something new, a prophet to come after me, who is Muhu Ahmed? They went, huh? No, you're going to die. You have to do it. You're the Messiah. You have to give us the victory. Let's go kill some people. You think I'm lying? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Some people talk about Islam spread with the sword. Have you ever heard this? Islam spread with the sword. Have you heard that? We learned today when we were over at the Carnegie Mellon University, as a matter of fact, the word Islam would not allow that. The word Islam, one of the meanings in there is this sincerity, and how do you force somebody to be sincere? Huh? You can't. So Islam can't spread by any kind of force or coercion, any, any type. It won't work. It wouldn't be Islam. It would be Islam. Get it? So it couldn't, but never mind. It does say in the New Testament that Jesus told him, now is the time to sell your coat and buy a sword. What? Sword. And I did not come with peace. I came with a sword. A what? Sword. Now, you know what our preacher told me when I was a kid? I said, why did he, he didn't come with peace? You always tell him about Jesus came with peace. He said, he said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. When the people used to copy it, those manuscripts, it was late at night, and their candles are burning, and they can't hardly see. And somebody was eating spaghetti, you know, it's in Italy, and they dropped and the, the spaghetti fell. It looked like an S, and that's where they got sorted. It used to say, word, I came with a word. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good for shooting from the hip or on the spot. I thought he did good, don't you think? Huh? <laughs> I mean, this guy could sell used cars like crazy. Spaghetti? <laughs> I forgot to tell you, <laughs> there wasn't English anywhere. <laughs> they don't have any, any word sword anywhere in the Arabic or Hebrew or Aramaic. This is not... <laughs> this is not the word. They have Saif, they have Muhammad, they have Usam. Many words, but not that word. So I look through the Bible. I want to see. I have a concordance for the Bible. And I look through there. Oh, the word sword is more than 200 times. Oh my God. In the Bible. How many? More than 200? <gasps> sword, sword, sword. Take the sword and kill them. The sword. And it's talks about the sword a lot. Even on the day when they're having this big altercation at Gethsemane, when Jesus had been praying and, oh, let this cup pass from me, even so, your will be done. And then what happens? They got the swords out there fighting. And uh, one of the chief's slaves gets his ear cut off. And then Jesus told him, put your swords away. Let's make a comparison. You want to? Let's go get the Quran. What page? Well, the first time you find the word Quran is in which chapter? Oh. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry, mate. Oh, guess what? Now, which word though? Muhammad? Hussam? Saif? Well, any of those words? Not one. There is no word. Even though there are many words in Arabic for sword, not once anywhere in the Quran. <coughs> Which religion spread by the sword? Never mind that. Let's come back to our subject. Yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna bring up the Crusades. Oops, <laughs> sorry. All the Inquisition. Oh darn. <laughs> Just let it go. I want to talk about Jesus alayhi salam. 
Some people, when I came into Islam, they said, you turned your back on Jesus. You left Jesus. You left the religion of Jesus. And after I had read the Quran, I said, let me explain to you. I'm closer to Jesus now than I ever was before. Because I know who he really is. And I know he really is coming back. There is no doubt in my mind. And since I was a small boy, and I heard in the book of Revelations, Jesus will come back. I said, I wish I would be with those people who see him when he comes back. And there's no doubt in my mind because our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, Muhammad Alayhi Salam, he said it clear. Jesus, peace be upon him, did not die. It's in the Quran as well. Did not die, but rather Allah pulled him up. He's with Allah. Something else was made apparent to them. You remember when we were in Mumbai and you fixed that one for us. Remember that? It wasn't somebody else on the cross. It didn't say that. It just says something was made apparent and they've been arguing about it ever since. Ah. But what we do know, Allah is merciful and he answered the prayers of Jesus. And Jesus asked him, let this pass from me. So Allah lifted him up, brought him up. Not in the sense like elevator or something. I don't know. Who cares? What we're talking about in the last day, how will he come back? Angels will be with him and he'll come back. Not only we believe it, we know where. Will he come to Mecca? No. He's going to go to Bled Hashem. Better food. I like the food of Bled Hashem. It's very nice. Surya. Yeah. But by the way, I eat fool too. I know he's Egyptian, don't worry. <laughs> but seriously, when Jesus Alaihissalam comes back, he will be coming back to Syria, Surya. And when he comes back, it will be a time of great turmoil. We know this because he will be leading the believers against great battles of, that are going on. Do you think that's possible these days? Could it be that in a Muslim country there could be battles and fighting? That's possible. <coughs> yeah. Anyhow, when he comes, look what's going to happen. It's going to be time for which Salah? Morning Salah, right? Fajr? And when he comes, they're going to say, Oh, lead the Salah for us. Lead the prayer for us. He'll say, Nope. I'm not coming with anything new. You know, I'm just going to pray behind your Imam. Pray. See how beautiful? And then, he will lead the believers against bad opposition. But they will win. They'll be very successful. And at that time, that will be the appearance of the one-eyed false god, called in Arabic, Messiah Dajjal, or the false Christ. Messiah? Remember Messiah? We didn't talk about Messiah. We need to talk about that. Christ comes from Messiah, Messiah. We mentioned that part, but what does Messiah mean? Do you know? Messiah means wipe. You know Windshield wipers, wipe. Yeah, wipe, wipe. Because, no, well, this is real. This is Messiah. It is what Muslims make when we have, uh, uh, want to wipe over the top of our socks. And when we make wudu, we wipe them. Mess. Is it? Yeah. And the lady, she can just go over the top of her hijab. Hmm? Or the imam, he can go over the top of his imama. Or, I don't know. But the point we're trying to get is, this word is a simple word. And it comes from Hebrew. It's not just Arabic. Hebrew and Arabic are almost alike in many places. And the custom was that when they anointed a king for the Jewish tribe, they would bring him in front of all the people and they would bring as a tomb. This is the olive, the oil from the olive. And they would take this olive oil and they would anoint his head and they would say, this is our king. We accept him as our king. And when they would do this, this is called what? And no one is having it done to him. Messiah. Messiah. He was the Messiah. So they had all of their kings were messiahs. 
The special one here is anointed by Allah to be the king, the king of the Jews. And that's what he was, and that's what he will be when he returns, and he will be leading all the believers. There will be Jews who will recognize him. Good news. Christians also will recognize him. And Muslims too will recognize him. And they will follow him. And the one who is the one-eyed devil, or the Dajjal, or they call him also the um, Messiah, a Dajjal. That's another name for him. He's mentioned in the Bible too. He's going to die. And how? It's strange. It's mentioned in the Hadith that he will dissolve from Jesus coming back. It's amazing. You should read the stories about this. And when he comes back, after this takes place, there's going to be such peace. It's going to be almost like, like paradise on earth. Not really, but nice. It's going to be peace, calm, people following him will have it easy. And you've heard the expression maybe from the Christian talking about when the lamb lays down with the lion because it will be so peaceful that there won't be these kinds of uh, violence and things. Now that's something all of us should look forward to. Wouldn't that be lovely? And this is the teaching in Islam. And then finally, 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 Jesus and all of his followers, there will be a vapor that comes across and they'll fall asleep and then they'll die. Now some have offered that this is some kind of a time when they'll be like picked up by a flying saucer or something and go floating away and they won't really die and that, but everybody will die. And this is a good way for us to end the program tonight is to mention about this. Allah said in the Quran, Kulu nafsan Every single soul will taste death. Brothers, sisters, we're going to die. All of us were born, but nobody chose to be born on a certain day, at a certain time, a certain place. We had nothing to do with it. Our mother knows more about that than we do. And she knows a lot about it. But we really do have one thing to be responsible for. How do we die? The message that came with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, David, Suleiman, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them all, was a beautiful and simple message. La ilaha illallah. There's none to worship except Allah. And Allah sums it up in a very lovely way in chapter 3, verse 102, Surah Al-Imran, when he says, Ya yuladina amanu attaqallah haqatu katahi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimu. O oh, you who are the believers, who have come to faith, have taqwa for Allah. Respect, fear of Allah. It's his right. And don't die except in a state of full surrender, submission, obedience, sincerity, and peace to him. I had to translate the word aslama, to be in this state with him. So. We see that Jesus fulfilled really all of the scripture. He fulfilled the Old Testament as coming and leading to victory. He came, then he went on a hiatus, they call it when he left, but he's coming back. And when he comes back, he will have that victory. He predicted one would come after him, and he came, that was Muhammad. So we find that this is exactly right. And the New Testament, obviously, if you read John chapters 14, 16, you find that surely he's saying something. I have to leave so that the comforter, they translated Parakletos from the Koine Greek to English as comforter, some places counselor, some places as different things. The main thing was he said somebody's coming after me. And he came. The spirit of truth, the comforter, the counselor, the advocate, and Muhammad وسلم, was all of this and much more as well. We know without doubt he was speaking about Muhammad وسلم. In any case, for us as Muslims, we're saying congratulations to the Jews. What you thought is 
going to happen. No problem. Your Messiah will come. He's already been here. You didn't recognize him the first time, but I hope you've recognized him the second time. For the Christians, we say to you, congratulations as well. Because your book still has, even though you lost the original, you still have some truth in it. And we can verify it for you as well. And for the Muslims, I hope and pray that you'll stay awake. Because this is a very important subject. When Jesus returns, we have to be on that state of a taqwa. We must be in this state of a taqwa when he comes back. So for all of those who follow the monotheistic faith, congratulations. This is the greatest thing. Believe in one God and follow your messenger and believe, believe in Jesus. Peace and blessing be upon him is coming and returning back. That's my prayer for all of us. Amen. Someone would like to come up and accept Islam. Allah Akbar. MashaAllah. Good news. I remember when I made Shahada. I cried. And every time I give Shahada to people, I cry. I love giving Shahada. Come on up. No, no, come with him. Come with him. Come on. First of all, tell everybody your name. Uh, Jojo. Okay, and where are you from? Uh, from Philippines. The Philippines. Yes. What's your city? Uh, Alba, Alba. There's no city. It's only a province, you know. So you're a country boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Okay. So. Now, do you know about Allah? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was one. He's right? the only one. He's the only one that. Okay. You know about Muhammad? Um, Muhammad uh, is a prophet, last <laughs> prophet. The? I think he's the last prophet. Well, Muhammad's the last prophet. He's is coming back to finish the job. <laughs> is that what you meant? <laughs> After you heard our program, then I'm sure it confused you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. okay. Don't yeah, worry that's about why. it. Yeah. yeah, I heard the program. That's why I know. Do you want to be a Muslim? Yeah, yeah. Do you okay. know how to make bombs? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> You know, a lot of people, they will say a lot of things about you because you accepted Islam. But who cares? I only want to know what Allah is going to say about me on the Day of Judgment. If my Lord accepts me, that's all I care. I accepted Islam just like you 17 years ago. But when you accept Islam, you become just like when you came from your mother, brand new. Brand new. No sins, no scratches, no dents, low mileage, good shape. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. And, yeah, I have a little bit of fun. So, the other thing is, you get to keep all your good deeds. And no bad deeds. Allah wipes it clean. And a person starts over completely like a brand new person. Oh, and there's something else. You get a special connection with your Lord. And you can pray and ask him for anything, and he will answer your prayers. Isn't that good? Yeah. That, that okay. Good. Now what we do, a formal, you already believe it, so inshallah, in your heart, you're already a Muslim. Don't worry. Yeah. But what we do is a formal introduction for you and for all of your brothers and sisters. We're just going to say it out loud. And is English okay? Is it okay. And then we'll do Arabic, okay? okay. So we'll say English. And if, you, if any part of what I say you don't agree with, you stop me. But if you agree, then you say it. Okay? okay. All right. Oh. You know, we are experts in this. We are highly trained in this. I'm going to be watching you. I'm just going to say the Arabic. Too. Okay, that's good, because I know the English. You know the Arabic. <laughs> No, English first. No, Arabic is first, okay? He doesn't know. Do you know Arabic? No, oh, but not, not So it has to be a language he knows. <laughs> he knows right or wrong? No, he has to know what he's getting into. No, what is he yeah? Where's your proof? By, by Filipino. Okay. <laughs> he's a troublemaker. <laughs> yeah. We know, now we know about this place. Uh huh. No, he's sweet. Okay, ready? Ready. <laughs>
I swear. I swear. There's no God to worship. There's no God to worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I swear. And I swear. Muhammad. Muhammad. Is his messenger. Is his messenger. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Ashadu. Ashadu. And la ilaha. And la ilaha. Illa Allah. Illa Allah. Wa anna. Wa anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute before everybody starts hugging this guy. <laughs> Take it easy on him. Don't break his ribs. <laughs> but but remember now he's been forgiven of everything. I'm standing here on this place on this day and this time, everything's brand new for you, and you have a du'a that you can make. His first du'a. Let's help him with it. I'll show you what to do. You just repeat after me. Allahumma. Allahumma. Give hidayah. Give hidayah. To Yusuf Estes. To Yusuf Estes. <laughs> Amin. 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 <laughs> well, Jimmy, ah. well, Jimmy. Well, Jimmy. All of us. Amin. <laughs> you like that, huh? No, but he, he must understand what he said. <laughs> oh, yeah. The <laughs> translation. I said, Oh, our Lord. Give guidance to Yusuf Estes and all of us. Say Amin. Including you. Amin. Say Amin. 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 <laughs> Congratulations, mashallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Mashallah. You okay? You have anything you'd like to say? Nothing more. You're most I just welcome. want to thank you know, uh, this is what I want since 2002. Since I want to be a Muslim, you know. Allahu Akbar! Yeah. Allah. That's why Seven I'm years! Yeah. MashaAllah. And Allah let you do it tonight while we were here. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. Shukr Allah. This is great. We're very, very happy for you. Anything yes, else? I'm very much happy to be a Muslim, one of the Muslims. You know? Yes. MashaAllah. This is your brother. And these are your brothers. Look at your brothers. You have a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters. MashaAllah. Now, we have a ceremony afterwards. Everybody likes to hug you, but you don't get to hug the sisters. <laughs> uh, you can announce that if anybody wants to take Shabra, I will encourage you. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we've really experienced in front of, right in front of our eyes, what it is for the transition for someone, he's been waiting seven years for this, but you don't have to wait seven years. If there's anybody here in the audience now who has not had this opportunity or would like to do it, now is a beautiful time. For the ladies, you don't have to come up on the stage, but if somebody would like to accept Islam, to make the public shahada, you just put up your hand like this, and we can help you with it. Even if you're, maybe, you know, you've got a Muslim name, grew up with a Muslim passport, but didn't really follow Islam, you'd like to get all of that behind you, you can do that too, because when you do the shahada with sincerity, Allah, He forgives all the mistakes, you start fresh, just like our friend, it is now going to be a Muslim. He's a Muslim, and do you have a name? No, I don't have yet. He, cho he have chosen a name. But already. I have already chosen my name. Really? While you are yeah, talking, yeah, yeah. he has chosen a name. Can what is it? Uh, Yosef. <laughs> Yosef! Allahu <laughs> Akbar! Whoa! This is Yusuf ibn Yusuf. I'll adopt him. <laughs> MashaAllah. MashaAllah. That was uh, fast. You know, I was used to the name um, about 10 o'clock in the morning. This morning? Yeah, yeah, 10 o'clock in the morning. Did you know I was going to be here? I don't know. You don't even know who I am? I don't have any idea. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> MashaAllah. That's pretty wild. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. Every time I come to this place, Fanar, something amazing happens. Something that I take home and it's in my heart, a memory. And then, you know what, when, when I'm away from you guys, I miss you. And I want to come back here again and again and again. So, mashallah, we thank Allah so much for this. Mashallah. Thank you very much, all of you.